Welcome to Open Minds. I'm your host, Christopher Balkrin, and I've been down to the University of Toronto's pro-Palestinian encampment, pro-Palestine encampment, and a few things struck me as I've documented in previous videos. First, uh, it's well organized. There are fences, there's porta potties. Uh, I just always wondered how, right? How? When I think of protests, I think of a group of individuals, you know, scheduling a time on a weekend to go down to government buildings, etc., to protest within that given time, maybe shut down a couple of streets. And then after that given time, people wrap it up, everybody goes home, no big deal, take some photos. Maybe there's a podium with key speakers talking about the specific cause. It's a very kind of lighthearted protest. Um, and then it eventually just disperses after a few hours or however long. Um, the reason why is because people have to get back to their regular uh, lives, but hopefully that through the protests, they've raised an issue for governments to consider. With the pro-Palestinian encampment, it's an encampment. And I was amazed that there were fences put up. There's porta potties put up. If you look inside the encampment at various parts, you'll see there are uh, readings and edu educational material, et cetera, et cetera. What's also interesting is that throughout the uh, fences, there are there's tarp put up. Like basically, they don't want people looking in, which is also a bit odd. When I went there, I was also struck about how quiet it was. And so these thoughts about the well-organized nature of it kept go coming through my mind. I mean, after all, and also the tents look really new and they look really in, like fresh and new. Like there's nothing uh, old and, and decrepit about the tents that these students are in. But what also struck me about all of this is why would students camp out when it is so expensive to live in the city of Toronto? It is so expensive. So again, very odd, and that deserves its own separate podcast. But Politico actually recently put out an article on exactly this, the same questions that I'm having, or at least had, um, and it's about pro-Palestinian protesters are backed by a surprising source, Biden's biggest donors. Now, again, I'm not um, uh, trying to make this politicized at all or take a stance from a right versus left uh, perspective. And I'm certainly not trying to summarize the article here, but at a very, very high level, there are a variety of complex non-for-profit organizations that are backed by large donors um, that fund um, human rights movements, protests. Did you know that you could actually fund a protest? You could hire people to start a protest. That's right. There's like a crowds for demand, crowds on demand, I think it's called. Yeah, crowdsondemand.com. Check that out. You can actually make an impact by hiring a bunch of people to create a protest or a rally or some other type of advocacy. So, crowds on demand is a direct way where people can just pay a bunch of people to protest. But what Politico is saying is that there are actually a, a series of coordinated actors that are funding pro-Palestinian encampments. And one of the major funders is the Open Society Foundation. And its largest donor, I think its number one funder, is George Soros. Now, again, this is not some like global conspiracy theory from me. It's about really understanding um, what's happening here. And again, that starts to answer my questions about how the heck did they get these porta potties and these fences? It very well could be that these encampments are well funded by these uh, not for profit organizations. And so the complexity here is it's really hard for myself or yourself or anyone to actually show that the Open Society Foundation directly funds, let's say, the pro Palestine encampment at the University of Toronto. I tried to find like a balance sheet with the fences and the porta potties for the University of Toronto. I can't find it. I just don't understand why it's not there. Uh, but what it does, what the Open Society Foundation does, is they actually provide financial support to enable organizations to carry out activities, including organizing protests, conducting advocacy campaigns, and raising awareness about Palestinian rights. Um, this underscores the commitment to promoting justice and equality um, for Palestinians. 
And so, again, we think this is a noble cause. It's very noble that there's an organization that's highlighting the needs of the Palestinian people. Perhaps it's because otherwise the needs of the Palestinian people wouldn't be as mainstream than it is today. But then I thought to myself, this is odd that it's being funded because it's not organic anymore. Now that it's being funded by a conglomerate, there's a specific aim that this conglomerate might have. And I think that aim is for universities to divest from some companies and invest in others, potentially changing the investment portfolio of universities. Now, you might be thinking, well, why does that matter? Um, you know, if you're, pro, if you're part of the pro-Palestinian encampments, you're thinking this is a net good thing. But the cynic in me thinks, okay, you're just shifting funds from one company to another, and those companies could also be funded or have some type of interest from Open Society Foundation or George Soros, George Soros himself. So you might think, okay, Christopher, you're pretty much going off the rails now. This is like out of this world. Well, I just want to share with you what happened in Sacramento. Sacramento State changes investment policies, says pro-Palestinian demonstrators will be ending the encampment. That's right. Sacramento State University, I think it's called Sacramento State University, um, announced it has amended several of its posted policy, policies after pro-Palestinian protesters set up an encampment on university grounds for over a week. And one of the lists of demands is divesting from all companies and partnerships that actively participate in the occupation, colonization, and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. And so officials said the encampment will be ending when asked if they plan to leave the encampment, etc. No comment. Um, but I just want to scroll down here. Um, Sac State officials said they have created a policy on socially responsible investment, and they believe it's important that our efforts to fund students' education do not rely upon us benefiting from companies that profit from ethnic cleansing, genocide, or human rights violations. And so one thing that I'm going to really look for um, is the investment portfolio of Sacramento State pre and post. Because I think that's really interesting to know. Now, I don't know if they'll get as granular as noting the individual companies that the university invests in. I think instead they're going to show broadly, high level, you know, we invest in these sectors and we ask our companies that, you know, do they support Israel in the genocide in Gaza and the West Bank? And I think, to be honest, again, the cynic inside me might say, if I'm a car company, startup company, um, a tech-based company, as an example, maybe I put that in my mission and vision that our company is, um, you know, not openly pro-Palestinian, but our company supports social justice throughout the world, etc. Suddenly, you get access to more funding, more donors. Open Society Foundation gets interested. George Soros gets interested. Sac State gets interested. That's the real impact of funding these encampments, and so. Just to kind of close this off, I would say to the students who are in the encampments, don't think that you're not getting played here. Um, there are much bigger powers at play here that are using, again, your moral altruism. I've mentioned this before about pathological altruism. They're using your sympathy, your empathy to ultimately shift an investment portfolio. That's as simple and bare bones as I can make it, make it to you. You are part of uh, a movement that is shifting an investment portfolio. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is good. These are for companies that are not supporting genocide in Gaza. It's like, they may say that, but it doesn't make that company immune from any other malpractices or other, you know, other things that they're doing in their company. You know what I mean? So like, it's like, you know, a company that skirts labor laws in China says, yeah, we support, uh, you know, the rights of the Palestinian people. You get funded. Like, to be honest, that's, I, I, I'm not trying to be flippant, but that's the reality. 
uh, of what's happening here. It's a changing investment portfolio. Um, maybe because, and here's, a, let's take this a step even further. Maybe the, uh, the George Soros's of the world, the Open Society Foundations of the world, have noticed noticed that the uh, the rate of return on some of these investment portfolios have been lag lagging, and they need a higher rate of return. And they can't justify that higher rate of return without a massive shift. And that massive shift could very well be funding these encampments. Again, these are just my thoughts. I don't have any proof to back any of this up. But I think we really need to start talking about the funding nature of these encampments. I'll do another video as well on, you know, just the past week, there have been, I think, five or six or over almost 10 encampments that have come down. And if they're anything like Sacramento State, maybe they have also shifted or at least compelled the, the university to open its books on its investment portfolio. Think to yourself this. I'll leave you with this. What other force could potentially change a university's investment portfolio than an encampment? Right? What, what could possibly change a university's investment portfolio? Right. That, you know, nothing. I don't think. I mean, unless there's like strict government action. There's nothing that would really change a gov uh, university's investment portfolio to increase its rate of return, et cetera, et cetera. So there's probably a bigger game that's being played here. And sadly, the students are the pawns. So it's not George Soros who's going to get misdemeanors and trespassing and other charges and being harassed by police. Nope. That's the students. It's not uh, Open Society Foundation, you know, their CEO and their board camping out at uh, these universities and getting, you know, tossed like ragdolls by police if, in fact, the universities call in the police. No, it's the students. Um, and then there's other other factors at play here. So... Uh, I hope that sheds light. I hope that answers your questions as well on the encampment and how organized it seems. Um, it certainly does for me. And I'll leave links below to the articles that I've cited. And I'll continue looking into this because I think this is really, really worthwhile. And more and more people should be talking about the well-funded nature of these pro-Palestinian encampments. That's it. That's it for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave a like. Tell your friends. Tell... Uh, leave a comment below. I read all of them. I need to start replying to some. Thank you again. I really appreciate all your support.